Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Carl. And we're from Team Toprotect. Today we'll be talking about Envoy, which is an FTC web-based Java programming tool. So first, we're going to talk about Envoy programming requirements. So the first thing you need is one FTC legal Android phone, such as the Motorola or ZTE phone, with the latest FTC robot controller app on it. And you'll also need one PC with JavaScript enabled web browser, for example, Google Chrome. And this is because you use the laptop and connect it to the robot controller in order to uh, use Onbot. So to run Onbot, the first step is to connect the PC to the phone. So to do this, you first open up the robot controller on your uh, Android phone, and then on the top right, there will be three dots that you hit, and then you press Program and Manage, as seen here, and then it'll show this page. So on this page, it has the Wi-Fi for this phone, and then the password for it. So then on the PC, you can open up your Wi-Fi direct, and then connect to this phone's uh, Wi-Fi, and then use the password displayed on the page over here. And then once you've connected to the phone, you can type in this address over here, 192.168, etc., and then you should be redirected to this page. So on this page, uh, you want to hit the Onbot Java button, and this will bring you to this page. So over here, you want to hit the plus button on the uh, top left, and it will bring you to this page. So on here, it's basically a uh, a new file uh, window, so you can name your file and then sort out where you want the file to be, and then mark which kind of program it is, so, uh, such as autonomous, teleop, and then hit OK when you're done. And so once you have your program and then you type in your code, you can uh, hit the red icon over there, it uh, looks like your red wrench, uh, to compile and install the program to your phone. Now, if you structure your code, you should first include a hardware program where all the hardware functions are included. So this hardware function, uh, hardware file is basically where um, you include all the servos and motors and all your uh, hardware in there, and then you also define all the functions related to them. So for example, if you have a function that moves the servo, then you should include it all in the hardware file. And this is very important because if you, can, if you have all the uh, functions readily available in the hardware file, they're very easy to access, and so you can just have this one central function that will make everything easier. So when starting with a program in Onbot, uh, you go to this creation menu. Um, to start with the file name, it has to have a specific format. It has to start with a capital letter, and it cannot have any spaces. And so if you want to have a file name that's longer that has multiple words, uh, you generally will capitalize the first letter of every word and then just omit the spaces such as this example, uh, multi-word file name. Um, and specifically for the hardware file, uh, we uh, recommend that you set it as not not mode so that you can't like call it from your phone because this isn't going to have any programs that run. They just have functions that are run from other programs. And then you should disable it, although that doesn't quite matter if you're using it as not not mode. And we'll get into what disabling does later. So to start programming the hardware file, you start like, okay. So with any program in Onbot, you want to start with imports. Um, the hardware file is going to be the one that has the most imports, but most of them are going to be automatic. Um, basically, whenever you try to reference something, it'll import the required stuff for it. But certain sensors and more uncommon functions in uh, Java will not have automatic imports. So stuff like this sleep, you might have to add in if you want to use a sleep or anything. And if a um, sensor, say your uh, IMU, has a specific uh, set of imports it needs, you may need to look through reference code to find what you need to add because it probably won't automatically know to add them in. And so once you have all of your imports, you start by defining all of your hardware, your sensors, and your variables that you'll start using. Um, you want to do that before the constructor. Um, so you just set them all to null because they will then be redefined in an initialization function later. But you just want to make sure they're all listed out so that it knows what to look for and that it knows that it's there. And then you want to make sure you have a constructor for if you want to reference the hardware file later. Um, basically, this is the line of code that lets you reference it um, by creating an object with the code. Um, then once you have all of the stuff defined, you start getting into your functions. And the first function you're going to want to have is your initialization function. This is the function that's going to 
uh, declare your hardware map first. Uh, then it's going to declare all of the ports that your um, motors and servos and sensors are configured as. So you have it set as um, what you wrote in the configuration file. And then it sets all the conditions for those uh, hardware devices you added. So for motors, you'll set if it's forward or reverse, depending on which way it needs to go. Usually one of the two will be reversed. Um, and then you set your zero power behavior, so whether or not you want to coast or break. Um, then you set to what kind of run mode you want to use with encoders, without encoders, or run to position, which you usually only use for autonomous. And then you want to set it to its initial condition. So for a motor, it's going to be zero power. For server, it's going to be whatever initial condition you've already defined. Um, and then for you're going to want for sensors to declare or to call their initialization functions. Most sensors will have their own specific initialization functions that are part of their import package. So once you have your initialization function defined, you can then start defining your other functions. Um, for this demonstration, they're both very simple. But we have a simple drive function where it basically sets all of the motors of your chassis um, to be a left power and a right power. This is a very fundamental function that you'll want to get down early because lots of other functions are going to want to call something like this, whether it be going forward or just turning or even in Teleapp you want to call this function. It, it's just a very simple, um, fundamental part of the robot that you'll want to get programmed early. Um, and then we have a simple autonomous function that goes forward for a certain amount of time uh, at a certain speed. And um, as you can see here, you can reference other functions within functions. Um, this is very helpful for autonomous as it gets bigger. And generally, you'll want your more simple functions to be at the top, like this one. And then as things get more and more complicated, you'll want them to be near the bottom. Um, so now that we have our hardware file program, we're going to start creating programs that will call functions from it to run during competition. We're going to start with a simple teleop. It has the same naming convention as the hardware file. Um, capital letters for your first things, no spaces. And I would recommend that you include the word teleop somewhere in that title so that you can easily reference it when going through your file navigator. Um, but all that really matters is that at the bottom you select it as a teleop op mode and that you don't have it as disabled. Um, this allows it to have the proper imports for teleop and then also be able to be um, viewed on the screen in the teleop section of the driver station. Um, if you start having too many um, op modes, you can start disabling ones that have become redundant. Um, you do that by adding add disabled right above the class declaration. I'll show you on the next slide. Right here, just right after the add teleop, like that same area, you add add disabled to hide it. Um, so the structure for a teleop program is pretty simple. Uh, all of the imports are going to be automatic if you have the um, teleop op mode checked. Um, then all you need to do is, uh, in the class, you need to create the robot object. Um, this is what allows the program to reference stuff in the hardware file. And then inside the run op mode function, uh, the run op mode function is basically what happens when you press initialize, it just runs through this code. And so then you want to initialize your robot, um, so robot.init, and then you want to wait for start. So that's just wait until you then press the second start button. Um, and then you do while op mode is active, and then all of your uh, teleop code. Ours just does the um, simple set drive motors to be the left and right sticks. But this can be, all, like all of your inputs that you want for teleop are going to be in that while loop. And that way it will properly stop when you press the stop button. And so creating the autonomous, again, is very simple. You just name it something. I would recommend include auto in the name so that you know it's autonomous. And then you make sure you have autonomous checked as the out mode and you make sure it's not disabled. Now generally you're going to have a lot more autonomous functions than you're going to have teleop functions. And so you're going to want to be more careful about disabling older autonomous programs because that will clutter up pretty quickly throughout the season. And again, just uh, add disabled right around where you have add autonomous. And so the structure for the autonomous code is nearly identical to the teleop code. You have imports that are automatic, you have your robot object, you have robot.init, you have wait for start. But here's the key difference. Instead of while, you have if on mode is active. And this is what allows it to only run through the autonomous program once. Um, whereas teleop, you'd want to check inputs every time that you have it active. Autonomous, you just want it to run through once and then stop when it's reached the end of the code. 
And so inside the if statement is where you have all of your autonomous code. Uh, this example only has it going straight at half power for one and a half seconds, but this can pretty much be any combination of things. But you need to be careful about um, making sure that it knows when 30 seconds is up so that it can properly stop. So when you're programming with multiple people and have multiple phone sets and computer sets, you have to be very cautious about version control and maintaining the most updated version of your program on all of the computer and uh, phone sets. So to share programs on different phones, first you need to download uh, the program uh, onto your computer or PC and then from there upload it to the new set. And so this should basically uh, transfer the uh, program onto the other phone that you'd like. So here it shows how to download it. Uh, first you will go to your project files and then you'll right click on the program you'd like to download to your computer and then there's a download button on the pop-up. And then similar uh, for the uploads you just hit the upload file button up there and then from there it'll bring you to your downloads file which then you can open the uh, downloaded file. And this is, so basically all the uh, files you download to your computer are stored in your downloads folder. So in conclusion, Onbot is a very helpful uh, web-based tool to program in the FTC app. It has very distinct pros of being a lot faster to get set up than Android Studio. Android Studio has an installation time of a few hours, usually. Um, it's a lot easier to get the hang of Onbot. It's got a lot a uh, shallower learning curve, doesn't just throw you in the deep end, and it generally compiles pretty quick compared to Android Studio. It'll take a few seconds as opposed to um, a few minutes sometimes depending on how fast your computer is. Um, the cons though is that it doesn't have easy access to version control, so if you are programming with multiple people you just need to download and re-upload your program across all your computers. Um, it doesn't support external library packages, so if you are using more um, niche or complicated sensors that aren't um, that well, or aren't that common across uh, most teams, then you'll find it a bit harder to get all the programming set up for them in Onbot. Um, and the editor is limited to the web browser based features, so certain navigation tools that make it easy to navigate larger programs won't really be present. Um, but that's not too big an issue until you get to like thousands of lines of code in your utility functions. Um, and then the compiler occasionally has an error where it will either like give a false negative or a false positive in zero seconds without throwing up any messages. Um, but all you need to do for that is just uh, recompile until it either gives you a successful build in a few seconds where it's like believable, or if it um, throws up an error with actual error messages that you can follow.